In this short video, I describe how I estimated the elevation of the main light source, LSA, from a stimulating photo taken by Judah Bento Rua, during the well-known Fatima Sons miracle. This event took place on October 13, 1917, around solar noon when the sun's elevation should be around 42 degrees. This photo was published with several others, in the Republican newspaper Ilustrasao Portuguesa. A 3D model created in Blender simulation software, will do the calculation. It uses several parameters, the center of view C, the horizon line H, its horizon center HC, and the vanishing point VP of the solar rays. Any ray coming from the sun converges towards VP. A light ray grazing the sphere gives a shadow on the ground and points to VP. Let's put the digitized image of a photo, taken on October 13, 1917, around 1.30 p.m. in Fatima. We will estimate the positions of H, C and C. The analysis of the edges shows that the image has been truncated at the top. Its aspect ratio is not that of the negative plate of 12 by 9 cm, a European standard at the time. We then create a 12 by 9 frame by taking, for example, a horizontal resolution of 1200 pixels and a vertical resolution of 900 pixels. For our simulation and preview mode, only the aspect ratio matters. The truncation gives a ratio a little larger than the 12 to 9 ratio. We will therefore shift the image downwards, so that it is framed in the 12 to 9 ratio frame. We'll zoom in closer for more accuracy. We'll put 0.53 here, so it's fine-tuned to the pixel level. This position of C is correct, not in the center of the image, but in the center of the 12 to 9 ratio frame. Now we have to place HC correctly. Notice that the photo was taken more or less 50 centimeters down an embankment, on a tripod of about 1.5 meters high. We situate the horizon line at about 1 meter above the slope, or 5 to 10 centimeters above the vertical umbrella, which should be a little less than a meter long. We place the horizon at 0.31 units. The positions of C and HC give a pitch angle depending on the focal length of the camera. Usually, the press photographer levels his view of the horizon. Thus the roll angle is practically zero. Then we look for the position of the vanishing point VP, of the rays of the source LSA, i.e. their point of convergence. The shadows on the ground are partially blurred by a second light source, LSB, large, diffuse, and nearly vertical. It must be a well-lit cloud. Therefore, this flat stone casts a double shadow on an inclined block of stone where the influence of LSB is weak. After several trials, we find the position of VP to which the rays converge at about 2.42 for the horizontal x-axis and minus 2 for the vertical z-axis. This position of VP in the photographic plane is confirmed by many shadows. The stone seen previously, the shadow on the hand of the boy on the left, the shadow on the lapels of his jacket. the grazing shadows on the vertical surfaces of his face and ear, which indicate on tangential contact, the limit between the illuminated area above and the shadowed area below. Note also the direction of view of the kneeling man in the center. As well as the shadows on the brim of his hat. The vertically held hat hides LSB and allows the shadow cast by LSA to appear sharp on the edge of the hat, although not well contrasted. We also see a shadow directed towards VP in the hollow of the cap. And the shadow of another lapel on the jacket. We also notice projected shadows in the details of the vertical stones which are in agreement with the direction of VP. 
Let us look at the shadows of the face of the girl on the right, on the raincoat that covers her head. The shape of her cheekbone, of her right cheek, of her nasolabial fold in her nose, is cast on this raincoat in an almost grazing way. Which brings an additional precision to the estimated position of VP. Once the positions of HC, C, and VP are determined, we will be able to estimate the angular position of LSA as soon as we know the chosen focal length. We will run the Python script that calculates the elevation and azimuth for the positions of C, HC, VP, and the focal length. The script now uses the focal length of our initial model. To evaluate the correct focal length, we activate a verticality probe and place it on a vertical edge, where the vertical divergence effect due to the camera's pitch is more visible, i.e. as far as possible from the central part of the picture. Let's take the sleeve of the raincoat of the girl on the right. By varying the estimated focal length, the perspective of the vertical direction changes. We can then estimate the range of focal lengths that best fit the vertical direction. It seems to be greater than 30 millimeters, Let's place the probe in an area less influenced by the folds of the shoulder and the lower sleeve. A good compromise seems to be about 37 mm for the focal length. We can check this choice on other vertical details, like the strands of the lady's shawl on the left. Those sheltered from the wind and not touching the clothes that hang from the forearm and behind the umbrella. The estimate gives an elevation of about 28 degrees and an azimuth close to 145 degrees with respect to the direction pointing to HC. We disable the probe and activate the head-up display, HUD, to read these values directly on the screen. The estimated horizontal spherical coordinates of the vanishing point VP are close to minus 28 degrees in elevation, and minus 34.5 degrees in relative azimuth. A quick check is possible. Actually, adjusting the photo plane to the camera's estimated pitch, roll, and relative azimuth angles, 4.8 degrees, 0 degrees, and 34.5 degrees respectively. We read about 44 degrees on the protractor, for the perspective direction of the sun elevation at HC, the horizon center. When we apply a 3D rotation toward a relative azimuth of 90 degrees, we can read on the same protractor, the actual elevation of the sun, about 28 to 29 degrees. Our conclusions? The elevation of LSA is quite lower than that expected for the astronomical sun. All in all, the in-depth analysis of pictures and testimonials invalidate any attempt at coherent explanations made so far, meteorological, physiological, or psychological. Like Haffert, Van den Aardvijk and Yaki, we estimate that all naturalistic explanations to date do not account for all the observational details and credible testimonies. It is not a question, however, of giving up explaining the phenomenon, but of eliminating defective explanations. A coherent interpretation is not easy. Such an interpretation risks putting forward hazardous or partial hypotheses. According to our purpose here, we refrain from giving new interpretations, limiting ourselves to providing elements of objective research.